in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to a chilling insight into the powers of witchcraft and an ancient curse. Witchcraft today is an in thing with the young, which may appear somewhat incongruous since witches, demons, and warlocks are older than the beginning of recorded time. And somehow, despite all of society's maledictions and efforts to stamp it out, witchcraft has survived, as we will demonstrate in our spine-tingling tale. Do you believe in demons, Miss Bell? Frankly, no. Do you believe in God? Any God? Of course. Then you must also believe in angels. And demons, according to what we know about them, they are simply fallen angels, fixed eternally in evil. And although we may not know whether we are being fanned by airs from heaven or blast from hell, it is best to be on guard. And having said that, I should not like to be Robert Anthony, whom you will meet very soon. <laughs> Our mystery drama, This Will Kill You, was written especially for the Radio Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Norman Rose and Larry Haynes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Rage, my friends, is one of the curses of mankind. Rage thickens the blood assails the eardrums, racks the body with a mad urge to destroy. It has been said that whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. And that applies to all of us, even if some are on speaking terms with God or the devil. Witness a man who is consumed with rage. Theodore Rakatsi. <laughs> Honestly, you couldn't have heard me come in here. What are you breaking things for? Are you thinking of redecorating? This is the wrong time to try to be amusing, Liz. Well, what should I do? Ask if you've gone crazy? Evidently, you have not read this... This filthy, ignorant, arrogant, vicious review of my book. Oh, of course I have. That, that presumptuous idiot, Robert Anthony, to write such a review. Oh, come off it, Ted. Uh, <laughs> you know, you sound like you're back to the Middle Ages. What are you going to do? Challenge him to a duel? Uh, I have other powers. Other resources. You're serious. Serious? After this review, let me read just one part to you. Mr. Ragotzi, possessor of an awesome reputation as an expert on witchcraft, in this unnecessarily long book titled Demons and Demonology, has gathered the wildest concoction of old wives' tales, superstitions, and demons ever brought before the public. And, what is worse, he has given credence to them. To take witchcraft as seriously as Mr. Ragotzi does is simply childish. Ted, he's just another writer-reviewer trying to be clever. Yes, at my expense. At anybody's expense. You just happen to be the target of the day. Mm -hmm. And now he is my target. For what? A nasty letter to the editor? For? Should I? For death. Oh, sure. If you thought this review was bad, wait until you see the ones you get after you kill him. Uh, I will not kill him. Oh, that's a relief. Uh, Liz, uh, pick a date. What? Uh, pick a date. Any date that comes to your mind, and the time, uh, write them down on this slip of paper. What for? Oh, to please me. All right. What's today? The 14th. Here. Okay, well, let's do. The 28th, 10.53 p.m. <laughs> yes, it will do beautifully. Uh, thank you, Liz. You're welcome. And now that we've finished playing games, can we go? Of course. But the game is just about to begin. Have I ever remarked how well you drive, Liz? Often, thank you. I think that's what attracted me to you in the first place. Your driving uh, and your legs. <laughs> I'm happy to see that you're feeling better. Yes. Due to you, as usual. Oh, I haven't done a thing. Oh, yes, you have. Uh, you know that date you wrote down for me? Yes. Well, that is the exact date and time that Robert Anthony will die. Oh, sorry I asked. You don't believe me? Oh, I thought you'd forgotten about that silly review. Where are you going? To the party. Ted, why did you ask me to write down the date? Oh, a whim. 
It amused me to leave the amount of time that Anthony had left to live uh, to mere chance. Well, suppose I'd pick the date next year. Well, that would have given Anthony more time. That's all. You sound so certain. <laughs> I am. What's the matter with me? Why am I talking as if there were any possibility that you had the power to kill another human being? Mm. Why, indeed. I can almost understand why Anthony wrote about your book the way he did. And of course. Like Mr. Anthony, you also are a dabbler in the occult. Like him, you are an innocent, naive, playing like children with forces you neither understand nor respect. How about a bet? On what? On me and my powers against... Robert Anthony. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Oh, yes, you're afraid to trust your skepticism. It's very simply proven. If Anthony dies on the day and at the exact time we both know, then I win. If he doesn't, you are the victor. And you know once and for all that Theodore Recozzi is a fraud and a cheat. That part tempts me. Then I have your word. It is a bet. What are we betting? Your soul. Anthony, you're not leaving the party already. Oh, I'm sorry, Carl. I uh, just dropped by to meet your guests, but my publishers are getting uptight about my new book. Well, everyone here is talking about the hatchet job you did on Ricotti. Well, where do they think I've got a bone to pick with Ricotti? Well, I've read a lot of reviews, but... Look, I've had a job to do, to review a book. I never even met the man. I took off because his book was so, so ponderous. Instead of writing a history of demons and demonology, which would be interesting, Rakatsi wrote as if he were putting down facts. Uh, sorry if I touched a nerve. It's all right, forget it. I just think there's entirely too much fuss about the review. I know a little about witchcraft, and I think it can be amusing, but... Okay, but I hear Rakatsi's taking it very big. Well, I don't want to hear that Rakatsi's out to get me with the same crazy, demonic curse superstitious idiots believe in. Well, let's forget Rakatsi. What about that play we cooked up? Well, I just told you, Carl, my publishers are getting restless. I'm spending most of my time in the library. <laughs> Look, can we put it off for a week or two? Okay, fine. Now, I've got to run. But I'll call, Carl, just to let you know I'm still alive. This is Jennifer Bell and another broadcast of The Author Speaks. My guest for today is the man who has written the most controversial book about devils and deviltry. Theodore Rokossi. I am happy to be here. Mr. Rokossi, I must confess your book scared the daylight out of me. <laughs> was that your intention? Oh, no, no, no. So, uh, my intention was to inform, uh, to let people know that there are forces in this world that they may not have been aware of. Oh, well, then you're serious in your thesis about demons and their power. Oh, absolutely. Which naturally leads me to that review by Robert Anthony. How did you feel about it? Well, I would be less than honest if I said I was pleased. But uh, it caused me only a small annoyance. Really? Uh, you are asking the wrong question. Oh? Well, then set me straight. You should not ask if I were annoyed about it, but rather how Uziel Rabdas Bellet are angry about their powers uh, being mocked. Well, I'm not acquainted with those gentlemen you mentioned. Uh, which is just as well for you. You see, they are demons. Powerful demons. And if they take offense, oh, well, I, I should not like to be uh, Mr. Robert Anthony. You're predicting that some harm might come to Robert Anthony? Oh, I predict nothing. Forgive me, but didn't you just issue a warning? A warning is not a prediction. Uh, do you believe in demons, Miss Bell? Frankly, no. Do you believe in God? Any God? Of course. Good. Then, of course, you must believe in angels. And demons, according to all we know about them, are simply fallen angels, turned away from God, fixed eternally in evil. I would like to inform you, madam, that a belief in the existence of angels and demons is an article of faith with two of our major world religions. All I say is that I should not like to be in the company of Robert Anthony uh, during the next month. <laughs> Good morning. I see you had my books waiting for me, those five over there. Thank you. Well, today I ought to finish my research. I'm going to miss the peace and quiet of this library. Uh, my name is Theodore Gotzi. Uh, I called about a book you said you would have waiting. Ah, yes. Thank you.
Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Yes? It uh, sounds absurd, I know, but uh, I am superstitious about where I sit uh, when I work here. Also, the light. Oh, so yes, it's okay. Sit right there. Oh, yes, you, you're so kind. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, forgive my clumsiness. I have knocked your books down. Let me help you. Oh, it's all right. I can pick them up. Oh, I cannot think how I could be so clumsy. Uh, maybe I should wear glasses. Oh, don't worry about it. Accidents happen. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, uh, this... Uh, piece of paper is yours, I believe. Oh, thank you. Uh, is, is something wrong? Uh, you keep looking over your shoulder. No, no, no. It's it's, uh, it's nothing. I I don't feel well. It'll pass. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, uh, sir, can I help? No. No, I uh, think I need a little fresh air. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, sir? Uh, sir, your books. Oh, forget them. Uh, I'll be back when I feel better. <laughs> Trying to get yourself killed? I, I guess it looked like it, didn't it? Well, no, it's it's nothing. Oh, believe me, I I, uh, I was in the library and suddenly I had a crazy impulse to start running. Ah, what's the trouble? Nothing, nothing. There's no trouble. It's it's just that. Uh, what do you expect to find over your shoulder? Nothing, nothing. <sighs> if I didn't know that your last novel sold over a million, I'd say you just held up a bank and were running away. Look, forget the jokes, huh? But I'm Bob... sorry, I'm sorry. I really am, Carl. But leave me alone. Whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. But are the gods desirous of destroying Robert Anthony, or the demons? And who are the demons that are driving him? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. back to lead you along the dark roads of witchcraft. The demon-ridden Robert Anthony has turned to the 20th century remedy against magical spells, psychiatry, and is attempting to explain his terror to an eminent psychiatrist. How can I make you understand, Doctor, how intensely real this fear is? I'm not imagining it. It's there. I feel it. Every minute I feel it. It's... It's at my shoulder, behind my back, pressing in on me. Of course. Have you ever heard of anything like this before? Nothing exactly similar, but fear is quite common. Most people are afraid of something. But don't they know what they're afraid of? They sometimes think they do. And what do you tell them? I think it would be best if you talk about yourself. You say you first felt this way about a week ago. Yes, yes, I was. I was working in the library, and I suddenly felt I just had to get out and run. Had anything happened that day to upset you? Anything out of the ordinary? No, no, nothing, nothing, Doctor. Have you felt this fear before? I mean, early in your life? Well, just the usual, Doctor. You know, when my friends would dare me to jump over a large hole in the ground or something like that, but... Wait. Yes, yes, I just remember it. When I, when I went to college, there was a suspension bridge, a shortcut from the campus to my dormitory. Everyone mm -hmm. took it. Mm -hmm. Well, one night I was with some friends. And we came to the bridge, and it, it was out. There, there was only one single plank, and this was a, a, a deep, deep chasm, Doctor, maybe a hundred feet. Yes. Well, I, I wanted to go back to walk around it, but the others voted against that. They they all walked across. And I can remember how terrified I was. I, I got down on my hands and knees and crawled across the single plank with the water roaring below me. I was terrified. You're afraid of heights. Well, I'm not comfortable with them, but... Would you say that today you're somewhere near the height of your profession as a writer? Oh, come on, Doctor. This has nothing to do with any fear of heights. This this is... Well, this is... Yes? This is witchcraft. Interesting. Why do you say that? Look, we've been through it. The review you wrote on the Rakatsi book, Demons and Demonology? Right. Are you sorry you wrote such a scathing review? No. No? Well, I... I don't know. I think you are. Well, if I, if I was wrong and possibly 
there are such demons and spells as Rakatsi describes in his book, that would or might account for this fear of mine, wouldn't it? You mean you think Rakatsi might have put a spell on you? Well, it's possible, isn't it? <laughs> Can't you think of another explanation? Can you? Yes. Let's examine what you've told me. On the one hand, you believe that Rakatsi has put some sort of a spell on you. Am I correct? That's all I can think of, Doctor. Why would he do that? Well, because he... Exactly. Because you have hurt him severely. So your statement that he wasn't injured by your review is false, isn't it? Well, or illogical. All right, it would seem so. Very well. You admit that to yourself. And then think that as a sensitive man, you've satisfied your own ego with a review that you think might be unfair. Where does that take us? Doctor, do you believe that I feel so guilty that I run through the streets pursued by shadows? That I can't sleep because I, I feel a presence in my room? That I feel threatened every second of the day and it's getting worse by the minute? Do you really believe that? It's a possibility. Oh, no, no. You'd rather believe in witchcraft. Why? Doctor, you're not helping me. If you'll examine your motive as to why you insist that Rakatsi has some power to cast a spell over you, then I All think... All right, I'm getting out of here. That won't help. Neither do you. I tell you, I feel that I'm going to die, and you talk about guilt? I'm getting out. Desperate men take desperate measures, and Robert Anthony was desperate. As he ran from what he thought pursued him, he held on to the last of his sanity. In his dabbling in witchcraft, he had heard, as had everyone interested in diabolism, of Professor Thurman Anderson, an outstanding scholar and acknowledged authority in the field. Professor Anderson? Yes? I'm Robert Anthony. Oh, come in. I've been expecting you. You have? Why? Because I read your review and I know Rakotsi. Oh, then you think he might have done something to me? I think it's probable that he has tried. I won't know until you tell me what's happened. Uh, come in and sit down. Thank you. Professor, do you, uh, do you think you can help? First, tell me why you think Rikotsi has cast a spell. Because as I sit here talking to you, I'm eaten up by fear. I have a feeling that something is following me, Professor. Something, something so terrible that I can't even imagine what it is. But I'm certain, I'm certain that it's going to kill me. Uh... How long have you had this feeling? About a week. And can you remember when you first felt it? Oh, yes, very vividly. It was in the library. I, I... Do you know Rakotsi? No. No spell can be put upon you unless the creator has some contact with you. Did you meet him by chance, perhaps? Well, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I, I haven't been very social this past week. I can't even begin to think what it could be unless you give me something to go on. Did you have a chance encounter with anyone? Did a stranger bump into you, perhaps? No, no, I, I, I... Oh, wait, wait. Yes? In the library, there, there was a man, a man with a, a slight accent. Rickard, she has an accent. Well, I remember he came over and asked if he could sit next to me, and as he sat down, he knocked over my books. He, ah. He apologized, and he insisted on picking them up. Anything else? No, no. Yes, yes. Yes, he gave me a piece of paper. You took it? Well, of course. I, I, I didn't remember whether I had actually dropped it or not. Uh, do you have it? Well, yes, because I remember looking at it when I got home and wondering what it was. It just didn't make any sense to me. Well, 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 can I see it? Oh, sure. There you are. Hmm. Good Lord. What is it, Professor? What do you see? The casting of the ruins. What? What does that mean? I can't believe that even a man as vindictive as Rakotsi would do this. Professor, what is it? You see this writing? Yes. It is the runic alphabet. It represents an ancient death curse. And, and those uh, figures on it? The date of your death. Oh, that's ridiculous. It was used many centuries ago. There are stories of younger brothers using it to eliminate the rightful heir to the throne. It has earned the reputation of being one of the most powerful of all the ancient spells. The drawback, of course, was the absolute necessity of having the man or woman casting the runes to pass the curse on directly and have it accepted. Oh, no, I won't believe that. This is the 20th century. Careful, careful. 
Lose this paper and you lose your only chance. Chance? You mean there's something I can do? One thing. What is it? Pass the curse to someone else. Oh, this is unbelievable. If someone else told me about this conversation, I'd say we were both fit subjects for an insane asylum. <laughs> no, no, I can't go on this way. Professor, how do I go about passing this on? You have someone in mind? Do I have to know a person? No, you could pass it to a stranger. Well, how? Uh, simply brush up against someone in the street or on a bus or a subway. Uh, see that he drops something. Then pick it up. And along with the package, you pass this piece of paper saying, uh, I believe this is yours. When they accept it, they have it, and you are rid of it. Oh, no, I couldn't do that to anybody. I just couldn't. Why not? If you don't believe in the curse. I don't know about the curse. I can't believe that it will actually kill anyone, but I know how I feel. That's, that is very real and horrible. Well, how, mu how much time do I have? Today is the 23rd. The date here is the 28th, 10.53 p.m. There's not a lot of time, is there? Plenty, if you start to pass it now. No, I just can't, Professor. I, I wouldn't give this to my worst enemy, let alone... Hold it, hold it. How about a coffee? <laughs> I wondered how long you would take before you got around to that. Yes, of course, I'll pass it back to him. Uh, how? Well, I'll just... Uh... <laughs> Exactly. Rakutsi obviously knows you. He is going to be on his guard. Well, can, can someone else pass it? No. It must be passed directly. There must be a way. Hello? Liz, Bob Anthony. Oh. Liz, I must see you. I don't understand. Well, I hate to sound like an old-fashioned melodrama, but it really is a matter of life and death. All right. Where shall we meet? Uh, someplace where we can talk. How about, uh, the Chevy's? Well, I don't think we should be seen together. Well, that's not the kind of talk I had in mind, Liz. I know. I still don't think we should be seen together. You... You know? How? How about the cafeteria at the zoo? Yeah, okay, but Liz... Half an hour. Okay, see you. <laughs> No, you're not. I'm really. What would you like? Oh, just coffee. All right, I'll get it for you. No, no, I really don't want anything. Why did you call me? Liz, you wouldn't be surprised and go all girlish on me if I tell you it's because of your relationship with Rakati. No. Okay. Uh, this is going to sound crazy. Well, try me. Liz, I have to know everything you know about Rakati, not personal things, but... His schedule, his plans, that sort of thing. Oh. It's, it's terribly important, Liz. Yeah. You're not going to ask me why? No. When I said it was a matter of life and death, I meant that. You have to believe me, Liz. Well, I do. You're, you're entitled to an explanation. And, and... You do? Yes. You know, I'm making a fool of myself. I'm talking to the wrong person. I, I just never even considered for a moment that you'd be in it with him. I'm not. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Well, how? I'd rather not discuss it. Well, you've got to, Liz. Don't you see that? Isn't it enough for you to know that I realize you're in trouble and I want to help? All right, now it's my turn to ask why. No comment. But, Liz... You're wasting time in arguing. What can I do? I've already told you. But don't you see that I'll feel better if... If you can trust me. Yes, exactly. This isn't just fun and games for me, Liz. It's... it's... <laughs> Your life. Then you are in on it, huh? Look, I know about it. I'm involved, but I have as much to lose as you. Maybe more. And that's all I'm going to say. Do you think he can do it? More important. What makes you think he can? Everything I know. He tells me he cannot. But everything I know, everything I've learned, everything that science says doesn't help stop the terrible feeling I have that something, something is after me, Liz. It's just, it's just waiting, waiting until it has... 10.53 p.m. on the 28th. That's the date. What makes you think I can help? I have one chance to break whatever spell Rakatsi has put on me. And what's that? It's just a slim chance, Liz, but a chance. Just take my word for that. If you do want to help... Get me 
need the information I want and need. I'll try. Yeah. How do I reach you? Here. This number. Mm -hmm. Any time, day or night. If I'm not there, I'll get back to you in five minutes. I'll try. Thanks, thanks. And Liz. Yes? We haven't got much time. Time is running out on Robert Anthony. Whatever it is that's following him, or what he honestly believes to be following him, has a target date. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Let us get back with Robert Anthony under a spell and convinced that he has now only 24 hours to live. The date set for his death is 10.53 p.m. on the 28th, and it is now the afternoon of the 27th. And Theodore Ricotti has a visitor. Liz, come in, my dear, come in. I took the chance that you'd be home. Yes, and I am, and I'm delighted. Of course, I shan't be home for long. As you can see, my bags are all packed. Where are you going? Uh, to my little hideaway up in Perdis. Uh, you remember it? Of course. As a matter of fact, your dropping in might be called providential. I was going to call you to ask you to drive me. When are you leaving? Tomorrow night, uh, fairly early. I uh, think it would be wise for me to be out of the city when Anthony meets the demons. Oh, call it off, Ted. I beg your pardon? I'm asking you to call it off. Call what off, dear Liz? You're much too modern and liberated a young woman actually to believe in demons. Or even more fantastic, that, uh, that I can control them. Don't fence with me, Ted. Call it off. I wonder if I talked with Anthony today, would he write the same review of my book all over again? Or uh, would he have a more open mind? Why don't you ask him? Well, I would like to. I would very much like to, but, uh, well, it's not practical. Uh, by the way, you haven't said you would drive me up to Purdy. I cannot. I'm sorry. Ted, I, I really I cannot. want... Liz, have you forgotten our little wager? No. Don't you think you might owe it to me to be with me when we hear the news of Anthony's death? Ted, I'm asking you to call it off. Your bet or... The whole thing. Oh, my dear, I would like to. I would really like to please you. Well, then... There are others involved. I don't understand. When you call upon these forces for help, you're taking a very serious step. It is understood that you're not indulging a whim. These forces do not like the idea of being used carelessly. They are not to be toyed with. Oh, I'm sure you could do something. It's really amazing how you have come full circle in your belief in my powers. <laughs> would it help if I said I believe everything you claim? It would be an immeasurable aid to my ego. I mean, would it, would it help change your mind about Anthony? I admire you're not asking to get out of our wager. I sincerely admire you for that. Oh, save your admiration. I'm not asking to be released. I'm telling you that I'm not going through with it. Oh, you disappoint me, Liz. You really do. But I... I don't think you can withdraw. I can do what I want. And I don't want to play this game any longer. You have no choice. But I do. We're talking now about my soul. I don't know whether a person has a soul or not. Uh, take my word for it, Liz. You have a soul. Oh, fine. But it's mine. And I'm not giving it to anyone. You have already committed yourself. To what? To a bet made on the spur of the moment and not in any seriousness. I only made it to keep you happy. Whatever your motive, you made it. I intend to hold you to it. Hold me to what? An oral agreement? In the circles in which I move, it is binding. And I say no. And that is most unwise. Are you threatening me? Of course. I think you should know that I will be powerless to help if you should change your mind. I'll remember that. I advise you to keep it very strongly in mind. And uh, along those lines, you won't change your mind about driving me to Perdis? I can't. Really. Uh, then I shall have to take the train. That seems obvious. I'm going to ask another favor. For your own sake, it is necessary that you be with me the day after I have won my wager. I would take it kindly if you would get me a ticket on the 9.30 to Perdis. Ted... I, I believe there is such a train. And then I'll give you the keys tomorrow. About my... And you can drive up the following day. What makes you think that... Because of our relationship, I've been extraordinarily patient with you, Liz. Now, you will do me these favors. It uh, may predispose me to have more patience with you on the day my wager is due. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, Liz, I've been waiting for your call. Do you have anything for me? I don't know whether or not it helps, but he's taking the 9.30 train to Purdy's on the 28th. 9.30? That doesn't give me much time. For what? For what I have to do. Liz, that makes it so close. Are you sure about the train and the time? Positive. I bought the ticket myself. 9.30? Huh? Yes. God, it's going to be awfully close. Did he give any reason for picking that particular train? Well, first he asked me to drive him up. I said I couldn't. And then he told me to get the train ticket. He said... What? What did he say? Well, it's not important. Liz, everything is important. What did he say? He said that he wants to be out of town when, when it happens. Oh, yeah, sure. That makes sense. Bob? Yes? It, it isn't going to happen, is it? Liz, I'm trying. Do you... I mean, what, what do you honestly think of your chances? A lot better now than before you called. Is there anything else I can do? Yes, pray for me. And you for me. What? Why? How are you involved? Forget I said that. How can I forget Believe it? Believe me if I tell you that my problem is... Well, it has something to do with you. But I'll be okay if you're okay. Oh, you sound like a book title. Well, at least you can show. I hope it isn't gallows humor. Liz, I've got a lot to do. I have a plan. I don't know whether it'll work, but it's made me feel that I can do something. And I'm going to do it. Good luck. I said I... Bob Anthony! I didn't believe it when you called. How can I help you? I need a makeup job. For a TV appearance? No, 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 no. I must be disguised so that even my own mother wouldn't know me. Can you do that? Well, maybe if you tell me what it's for, it might help. No, no, I can't tell you. You'll have to take my word that it's deadly serious. Well, uh, how long will you need to wear the disguise? Oh, uh, four hours at the outside. How many people do you want to fool? One. A man. Uh-huh. How, uh, how well does he know you? Well, that's hard to say. He's not an intimate friend. In fact, I only met him once, but he knew me then. Uh, yeah, one, one more question. Mm -hmm. How does this guy think of you? Oh, I suppose he sees me as a young, smart aleck. Good, good. So we have to make you... Oh! Uh, step into my parlor. Okay. Aren't you going to lock it? Okay. Uh, sit in that chair over here. Yeah. Now relax. You're too tense. I'm sorry. See, now the hair piece is no problem. Your head and hairline are easy. But uh, the eyes... The eyes? Exactly. With the hair you have, you can't have those alert brown eyes. Ah, uh, let me see. Watery blue with little veins running through them. Ah, yeah. Okay, now. Ever wear contact lenses? No, of course not. <laughs> You'll love them. <laughs> Slight effort. There. How's your vision? Well, I can see. Good, good. The wrinkles come last, and, uh... I think a little goatee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bushy beard wouldn't be right. <laughs> now just put your head back. Grand Central Station in New York City at 9 o'clock of any evening is a dreary place. The waves of homebound commuters have washed away. The garish light serves only to point up the cruel deterioration of past grandeurs. The waiting rooms are almost empty. It was 9.20 exactly that Robert Anthony, carrying a small suitcase and disguised as an old man, walked slowly up to the ticket window. Uh, Mount Kisco, one way, please. Anthony walked slowly to the station platform where the 9.30 was about to depart. He wanted to be almost the last one to board the train so that he could locate the car that Rokotsi had selected. He boarded the train and passed through several cars, and then his pounding heart slowed. He saw Rikatsi seated in the middle of the car and with the seat next to him vacant. Excuse me, would you mind if I put my valise on the rack? Oh, not at all. Uh, let me help you. Oh, it's very kind. Yeah, not at all. Uh, you, you certainly cut that close. I'm afraid I don't walk as quickly as I used to. It's hard to get accustomed to growing old. Yes, I suppose it is. Uh, I hope you'll forgive an old man's curiosity, but that book you're reading... Uh, the Dynamics of Witchcraft. Yes, yes, that subject has always fascinated me. Uh, did you ever study it? Uh, no, no, but uh, when I was younger, Halloween was my favorite holiday. 
You know, dressing up and trick or treat. Yes, yes, I know. Oh, that was such great fun. Uh, yes, yes. Well, I, uh, I won't disturb you anymore. I know you're anxious to get on with your eating, but uh, where, uh, where are you getting off? Purvis. Is that before or after Mount Kisco? After. Uh, I, I wonder... I mean, I have a tendency to drowse off, you know. I wonder if when we reach Mount Kisco, uh, yes, it would yes, be... I will let you know. Excuse me, is it... Uh, oh, it's yeah. the next station. Uh, did you have a nice nap? Oh, yes, yes. Very refreshing. Thank you. I, uh... I do hope my nephew will be at the station. Yes, I'm sure he will. Uh, what time is it? Uh, Twenty past ten. Uh, are we on time? Well, I don't know. I suppose so. But uh, even if we're running late, I'm sure your nephew will wait. Yes, I hope so. And when you get old, you seem to worry about everything. <laughs> the young have their worries. But they're not the same, are they? <laughs> Sometimes they are. Sometimes a young man can worry himself almost to death. Oh, that seems such a waste. Or even worry about dying. <laughs> yes. I have known some young people who are simply terrified of dying. Oh, I didn't think the young gave much thought to death. Oh, some of them do. Some of them do indeed. Uh, take my word for it. Well, that seems strange. Strange? Old man, I could tell you stories that are beyond belief. Stories that... <laughs> well, I, I seem to be talking a lot. Well, I enjoy it. Thank you. But uh, we're coming into Mount Kisco. Oh, well, I've enjoyed talking to you. And now I'll just get my luggage from the rack. Oh, oh, oh my. Look what I've done. I've dropped my bag. Uh, here, let me help you. No, 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 no. It caused you too much trouble. I'll be able to... Oh, oh, your book. I just seem to make things worse. If you will let me do it, it will be much simpler. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But don't let me return your book. I believe this is yours. Uh, yes, yes. And now you'd better start if you want to get off and meet your nephew. Yes, yes. Goodbye. And thank you. Wait, what? You... You... Bastard. The paper. Please. Let go of me. My nephew. Stop acting. You're Anthony. I know it. Yes, you're right. And I'm getting off here. Not until you tell me where you hit the curse. The paper you passed to me. Miss your train. And the train. Where is it? The paper. I'll do anything. But you know how close it is. This very little time. I beg you, please, for the love of God, tell me where you put that paper. It's in the book. I slipped it in the book when I gave it back. The book. The book. Where? Where? Oh, my God. Catch it. Catch it, Anthony. Grab it. No way, Rakosa. Uh, get it yourself. It's blowing away. You know I'm lost if I don't get that paper. Come back. Come back. I'll get you. Rakosa. Look out. The train. End of our story of witchcraft and demons. The obituary notice said that Theodore Ricasi met his death when he inexplicably ran in front of a southbound express at the Mount Kisco station. Inexplicably? I'll be back shortly. sure we all know what the forces were that made Theodore Rakatsi run in front of the train that killed him. He panicked because of a superstitious belief in the supernatural. That, of course, is the explanation. Or is it? Our cast included Norman Rose, Larry Haynes, E.B. Juster, Roger DeCoven, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.